books I want to get into with my next guest. I must tell you, if there is only one book you can read this year, this is the book I highly recommend you read. It's called New Rules of the Game, 10 Strategies for Women in the Workplace. But guess what? There's a lot in here for men, too. The author is co-founder of HGTV, Susan Packard. Hi there, Susan. Hi, Rossini. How are you? You know, I'm great, and I love your book. I um, have to admit, I have a girl crush on you. You are just a powerhouse, and um, you you have a lot of really great tips in here. But why don't you first start by telling people who don't know the premise of this book? Okay, great. Um, Well, the premise of the book is around an idea called gamesmanship. So gamesmanship <clears throat> when you grew up you played games some t- some people played team sports um and i played a lot of games growing up so when i was thinking about why was i successful in my career you know what what have been the reasons and they were all around this idea of playing games successfully and so with the book what i was trying to do is offer um, a toolkit, if you will, of um, strategies and skills and really an attitude of winning and um, at the same time provide a little bit of a new lens. So you go into your workplace and you look at it as one grand game and, you know, the game of business, it's, it's about more than just performance. It's about being a great player in all aspects of the game. And I love how you talk about that boys who are now men really right. grew up with this idea of the playground games, uh, youth sports, right. and they learned right. how to win and lose. In both of those cases, also learned how to not be sore losers. And this, right. these are some lessons that most girls don't get early on. That's right. I mean, there are some sore losers um, for that are men and boys, but... For the most part, because they got the repetitions, and you know, even though you know when I go out and I speak, I always ask if it's a room full of women, how many of you play team sports? And you know, most did play team sports growing up, which is fantastic. But you know, we didn't get the, the number of repetitions. We didn't play with the intensity that um, boys play with, generally speaking. So we come into the workplace as adult men and women. And our ideas behind winning and competition are very different. And so the hope with the book is that it could help to bridge those differences. I'm talking with Susan Packard. She's co-founder of HGTV, which now has 98 million viewers. So think about it. She was one of the founders when it was this fledgling startup. That's so hard to believe. And uh, other big brands, to her credit, HBO, CNBC. So you know what you're talking about when it comes to business and uh, media. I love how you lay this book out. Her book, New Rules of the Game, is fabulous. Ten Strategies for Women in the Workplace. There are lessons in here for all ages and uh, men and women. Each chapter is one of these rules of the game. And uh, chapter three, Susan, learn to play offense. That sounds kind of aggressive. What do you mean by that? (laughs) Um, Well, what I mean by that is, again, if you think about this new lens of looking at the workplaces, there are certain uh, positions, you know, jobs that are out there that are offense jobs in the same way that if you play offense on a team, in a team sport, meaning, you know, what are the real jobs where you're going to score points for your company, where you're going to push the profitability of your company up? And so I talk about that. I talk about the fact that there's something called line positions, which for some reason, because I'm at universities a lot, this is not being taught. It should be. A line job is a job that includes some revenue component or some um, variation of that that increases the top line of a company. And So what's often, an example of maybe a title of one of those kind of jobs? Okay. So the, the easiest one to understand would be a sales job within an organization because clearly you have revenue goals that are attached to a sales job. Um, but it doesn't have to be. It could be somebody who is involved in product development of, you know, whatever the product is. If you're coming up with, for example, new ways or applications 
for the product that's being developed. These are new ways that you can grow um, the business. So all of these are the ones that, you know, as I've, I've said, if I'm sitting around the executive table and I'm looking at talent to promote, I am looking for um, those who have line experience because they will understand at least some of the P&L, some of the importance of pushing the profitability of a company. Versus what you call support jobs. And what are those jobs? Well, those t- tend to be staff jobs, and I tell a story in the book about how I learned about this when I was in my 20s, and I was a salesperson at HBO, and I saw that the woman that was, you know, in the cubicle near me was doing PR, and she was having a lot more fun than I was, you know, going to Hollywood premieres and all this. So I said, well, you know, when she left, and I asked the the head of the office if maybe I could apply for the job, and he said, do you want to run a company someday? And I said, well, yeah, which was, I mean, I didn't know. What do, we, what do you say when you're 25 years old and somebody asks you that? Of course you say yes, I, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's really astounding a man would ask a woman at 25 that question. But anyway, long story short, um, that job, he said, don't you dare take that job or apply for that job. That's a staff job. What you want is to be in the front lines. You want to be, you want to stay in sales instead of going into, you know, a staff or support job. Like a marketing or PR job are considered those support functions. Yeah, marketing's a little gray. Um, But, yeah, PR and, you know, even legal. You know, you could be the general counsel at a company. Which is a big title. It's a huge title, but you're still a staff person. Right. Okay. So those are some good definitions for people to know. And even if you don't want to run a company one day, there is that difference between the line and the staff. And then right. I think this is a really good one. Uh, you know, as we're coming off of this Women's March weekend, master right. the strategies of brinksmanship. And this is right. something, you know, in the work I do as an executive coach and helping people just be more powerful with their presence, that chapter really resonated with me because a lot of times women especially have trouble with that brinksmanship. What do you mean by it? Right. So this is the game of negotiations. Um, and again, I will always ask when I'm speaking to groups, how many of you in the room have had to negotiate something either in your career or in your life, and everybody raises their hand. You just don't realize you're always, you don't always realize you're doing it. Maybe you don't call it that. But, you know, anytime you're in a situation where you're not getting the answer you want um, and you try a little harder to get that answer, you're in a negotiation. So what I suggest in that chapter is um, ways to think about how to be successful in a negotiation. And you mentioned um, the whole issue around pay equity at the very beginning. And this is one area that we don't, we as women don't do a good job with ourselves, with with supporting ourselves in pay equity. We don't negotiate starting salaries. You know, the the, the last statistics I saw, 52% of men negotiate salaries and 12% of women negotiate starting salaries. So, we, we don't, you know, we don't stand up for ourselves. From the get-go. And from the very get-go. And then by the end of your career, if you're not doing those things, um, one statistic I saw is like $750,000 you've left on the table relative to a man who has done that kind of negotiating for themselves. Right. And that goes to my theory, which I want to get into with you when we come back from the break. And that is a lot of times uh, women could be their own worst enemies and perhaps are partly to blame for this pay equity problem. I'm talking with Susan Packard. She is co-founder of HGTV. Her book, New Rules of the Game, 10 Strategies for Women in the Workplace, has a lot of advice for women of all ages, but definitely also for men. We will open up the phone and text lines when we come back. 81807, some free advice here, folks. 651-989-9226 or 866-989-9226. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. Rashini Rajkumar, back with you. My guest is Susan Packard. She is author of New Rules of the Game, 10 Strategies for Women in the Workplace. Phone and text lines are open, folks, 81807, or you can call us, 651-989-9226 or 866-989-9226. 
We have a text coming in, Susan. This listener asks, can you speak to the nurses who are in a service industry and who are often in a situation of being devalued and disrespected by upper management and treated inequitably? Mm. Yeah. Um, so, you, you know, with this whole age of what's, what's coming upon us with robots and artificial intelligence and machines taking the place of um, a lot of jobs, one of the areas that you will always be secure is if you're wor- working in a nursing field um, because the importance of that connection, that human connection between you and the patient is, and I know that um, just having been a patient myself, I can see where nurses would feel that they're underappreciated when they're do- it feels like they're doing all the work and probably are doing most of the work. Um, <clears throat> it's such a valuable position. I would hope if, you know, there are enough of you who are feeling this way that you would be comfortable in having, you know, engaging your supervisor or your leadership in just having a conversation about that. And um, if not, I can't, I hope it isn't true. I can't imagine it's true that every hospital and every place is that same way. There is enlightened leadership out there, ladies. Um, sometimes you just have to look for it. Susan, are there any specific rules of the game? Uh, and each chapter in Susan's book is laid out with one of these rules, 10 chapters. Is there a, a chapter in that that really gets into some of this? Or, I mean, I guess this listener could probably draw from several of the rules. Yeah, I think so. Um, one of the one of I, I tell people that if you're only going to read one chapter, you should read chapter five. Build your fan club. That was one um, of my favorite chapters. I'm glad you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it's you know it's about how do you build relationships and build your network within your organization and within your industry. So, for example, um, I'm a member of an organization called Committee of 200, which is the most senior women in business throughout the world. And with that, I get to meet and and learn from women who, you know, are in the everyday running companies. And, you know, are there trade organizations that you could be a part of that would help you to learn and network? And within your organization, there are all kinds of ways. You know, we, we forget about this, and especially women. And, um, I work with women um, as well, and it, it seems that we often just forget that we could ask somebody to help us. You know, if we're in the middle of a project where somebody else might have some insight and we want to get it done and cross it off the list, but by asking for someone else's help, you're building a network and a relationship there and trust which is really important as you um, advance in your career. Very good advice. Susan, I want to get back to that topic of the pay equity. One of our listeners, Mm -hmm. uh, after reading this column that I'm going to tell you about that I wrote for uh, Minnesota Business Magazine this month, sent me an article, the headline of which, and this was just in January of this month, or of this year, Natalie Portman says co-star Kutcher paid three times as much. Mm -hmm. So when they starred in a movie called No Strings Attached, in 2011, um, right. and these these are two amazing actors, and probably Natalie Portman has far more acting credits to her name and awards. Right. Even there, at that level in Hollywood, she's saying that. Right. Yeah, I was surprised to read that. So you know, we're all somewhat naive, right, about what really goes on um, in these situations. It's another reason that finding a culture of a company that has openness and transparency around these issues is really important. I mean, you're never going to know precisely um, what everyone makes. And I don't know whether that's even meaning, you know, that that may be either good or bad, but to have a company where you know that the culture is an open one and, you know, they post um, things openly and it's really important and one thing I do want to mention about the whole pay equity is something that the Lean-In Group, um, I think it was Stanford Lean-In Group, published, which said that in your entry from your in your first job from entry level to promotion, that a hundred of the when there are a hundred women that are promoted for every one hundred women promoted at that moment, a hundred and thirty men are. 
that is really early in your career to start seeing those disparities. And one of the things that they attribute that to is that we're not asking for the critical feedback that um, we need so that we can elevate our performance. And is that sometimes because of the sensitivity and women are perceived as more Mm -hmm. sensitive? Well, I think it goes both ways. It may be that your boss doesn't give it to you, but what's really important here is that you ask for it. Exactly. And get that feedback. So I wanted to share with you this theory I have and get your professional take. Minnesota Business, which is a Minnesota business magazine, asked me to write an op-ed piece for their January edition focusing on women who lead. And uh, my op-ed was about this whole pay equity thing. And the headline is women stop asking women to work for free. And my theory is when it's women and women together on both sides of the money, so the one who's the client as well as the one who's the vendor, When a woman asks you to give a discount or to work for free or lower than your worth, that's bad. That's her fault. But when you accept that, that's bad, and that's the other half of the problem. So that was the theory that I explored in my op-ed and really meaning to empower women to stand up for yourself. And sometimes that means saying no to a gig because you're not getting what you deserve. Right, right. I remember um, working with a woman and... She worked at a company that she was the only woman in the senior group. And um, there was something that came up about taking charge of um, a community event. And she raised her hand. And I said, why'd you do that? And she said, well, I want to show that, you know, I'm taking initiative. I said, but those aren't the kinds of things you're going to get promoted for, (laughs) right? Um, Raise your hand when somebody asks you to work on a task force where you're trying to do a new product introduction or come up with a new business idea. um, Or fly to Italy for the company. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. I would always raise my hand for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we have another text coming in. This person says, the only way to be sure there is not pay discrimination is for all salaries to be disclosed. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the good news is, is that the leadership, if it's a publicly traded company, you know, because they have to report it. Um, that that's To me, that's a, a big rub, is the disparity between those people at the top and those people at the bottom. Huge, you know, d- differences, which is not fair at all. It's like two different but, worlds, <laughs> two different exactly, planets. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, all of us have worked to get to maybe middle management or, you know, at some level, so we know how hard we've worked at each of these levels. And, you know, so when you start having people who report to you, you actually, your work, the work itself is um, bu- less busy in terms of tasks, more busy in terms of strategy, which is important, and you paid for that. But um, I would love to see, there actually are some companies are doing the um, full disclosure I've read it um, about some Silicon Valley companies that they are fully disclosing ranges, you know, published. Here's the range so that, you know, not everyone is precisely the same, but you can see that you're with range. And based on your background and your experience, you should be paid what, you know, it's explained how you should be paid based on that background and experience. Yeah. And just getting those numbers that are out there. Um, right. Well, one thing that I wanted to make sure people know and pointing back to that chapter five, build your own fan club, you have members of your fan club and you are a member of others fan club that crosses gender lines. I mean, you have advisors, friends, mentors who are men also, as well oh, as women. Yeah. Absolutely. And in fact, if you have a mentoring program in your organization, that's a formal mentoring program, you should voice the need to have men as mentors. And if you do have men as mentors, you should ask for a man as a mentor, somebody who's, you know, well positioned in the company, because it's just a different perspective on leadership. And we need both. Yeah, we really, we really do. And, you know, indeed, this Women's March around the world was an example of men and women in all ages coming together Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, for good reason, right? For positive reason. She is Susan Packard. Her book, New Rules of the Game. I'm telling you, folks, if you can only read one book this year, this is the book to read. 
or gift it to the young women in your life, your sister, whomever, and there are some good tips in here also for men, you can find out more about Susan on her website, susanpackard.com. Susan, what a pleasure to talk with you today. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you, Rashini. Great questions, and I hope you have a great afternoon. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. We are. 